I'm gonna share with you guys my most secret weapons as a mastering engineer. And it is my four mastering rules that I have that make sure that when I start mastering a song that I'm approaching it from the right spot philosophically. And here they are. Rule number one, just like a doctor, do no harm. When you sit down to master a song, your first and absolute most sacred task is to not make the song worse. So there's a couple different ways that you can approach this. If you have a song that you're mastering, if you make that song louder and sound better, you did a good job, and that song should sound better whether it's played quieter, whether it's played louder, whether it's on AirPods, whether it's on studio speakers, whether it's in your car, doesn't matter where. It always sounds better, and it always sounds louder. That's a good master. Obviously, a bad master is just louder, but it doesn't sound better. That's an important distinction. A louder master that sounds worse is... <laughs> you should feel ashamed. That's a very bad thing. You shouldn't ever do that. Rule number two is sound the best for the most. And what that means is when you're mastering, there's always compromise. There's always this idea, well, if I boost this frequency, it'll sound better on those speakers, but it'll sound worse on those headphones. Or if I lower these frequencies, it's gonna sound better on those speakers, but it might sound worse on those speakers. There's always some give and take. And your goal should always be to make a song that sounds the best for the most people. One of the main goals of mastering is to take a song and make it sound good in every speaker system and every pair of headphones that you play it in. That's a great master. A bad master only sounds good in the studio and it sounds pretty bad everywhere else. Rule number three, goosebumps, not luffs. So this is a funny one. Uh, and I, this is one of my favorite rules and definitely one of the things I think about the most as I'm mastering. A lot of people when they approach mastering, they're thinking about a lot of science. They're thinking about decibels and luffs and RMS. It's really easy to get fixated on the science of mastering and totally forget about the art. In my opinion, the best masters create the most goosebumps. The idea here is that mastering is mostly art because music is almost only art. And I can prove that by asking you a question. Why do humans like music? We don't know, we don't have any idea. Why when I listen to one song, I get weepy. When I listen to another song, I don't have any emotional reaction at all. <gasps> it's weird. We don't understand why humans like music. We don't understand the magic that music can have on us. And because of that, as a mastering engineer, your best tool is your ability to notice, hey, when I do this, I feel more magic in the song. I get more goosebumps. I get more emotional. That's the sign that you're on the right path. Not this like, wow, well, uh, my lofts are at negative 14 and um, I'm peaking at negative blah, 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 blah. These pieces of science are important as you're mastering a song, but they are absolutely not the bulk of the work. Most of the work of mastering is making a song that impacts people emotionally, that takes people somewhere, that when they listen to that song, that it takes them to a new world and they get to live somewhere else for a little bit while they listen to it. That's the, that's the best part about music. And that's definitely always my goal when I'm mastering a song is how can I create the largest emotional reaction. Number four, stop when you're done. Many people will master a song and they'll do a great job. But the problem is that they keep on tweaking and fiddling and adjusting and optimizing and putting more plugins on and doing more compression. They eventually kill it with a thousand paper cuts. When you're done and your song is the best that it can be, the discipline and maturity to stop to press bounce, to export that final master is an awful lot of what makes a mastering engineer good. It's possible to be the most talented, most knowledgeable mastering engineer in the world, but to make terrible masters because you don't stop when you're done. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Please like, subscribe, share. I'm gonna post a lot more videos like this. I'm gonna be dropping one every week in 2019 and I've got a couple I gotta catch up on. I missed a few weeks, a couple weeks ago. And by the way, one last thing, if you're trying to master your own songs, you're not sure you're doing a good job, I would recommend having a mastering contest. What that means is you take one song, send it out to a few people, have them all master a free sample, and then compare the results. And I say this because I, Chris Graham, of chrisgrammastering.com, offer a free mastering sample. So check out chrisgrammastering.com. You can send me one of your songs, I'll master a free sample and you can see what you think. Awesome guys, thanks so much, have a great day.